Hi everybody! Today we're going to have a look at the topic of devoicing. Lots of you asked me to make a video on this topic and of course if you ask I'll answer. Let's make a start. Before we start with devoicing let's recap what voiced and unvoiced really means. Voice sounds for those we use our vocal cords when we produce them that creates a much louder sound and unvoiced sounds they do not use the vocal cords and as a result they're a lot quieter. An example for a voiced sound would be b and an example for an unvoiced sound would be p, much quieter. So which sounds are voiced and which ones are unvoiced? In English, all the vowel sounds are voiced and quite a lot of consonants. And then we have a couple of other consonants that are unvoiced. But which ones exactly? You can see them here in the sound chart. The top half shows all the vowel sounds and all of those are voiced. And in the bottom half, we can see the consonant sounds. The blue ones are voiced and the yellow ones are unvoiced. Let's take a closer look at the consonants. Here is the chart again and you can see the unvoiced sounds in yellow. All of those unvoiced consonants have a voiced counterpart except for in the last row. We've got p with its counterpart b with d, f, with v, etc. And what do we mean by counterpart? This means that the two sounds have the same place and manner of articulation, but different voicing. P and b, both of those are bilabial plosives. Bilabial tells us about the place of articulation and plosives about the manner. But there is a difference, it's the voicing. P is unvoiced, but B, its counterpart, is voiced. This will be important for later on. Now what about devoicing then? This means that a sound that was originally voiced changes and becomes unvoiced. For example, Z changes to s. This is the process of becoming unvoiced and we call it devoicing. When does this happen? Often at the end of words when they're either followed by silence because it's the last word in a sentence or when the next sound is unvoiced and we call this the devoicing of final consonants. Voiced consonants with an unvoiced counterpart usually lose their voicing when they're placed at the end of words or when they're followed by an unvoiced sound. So that means b changes to p, d changes to t, g to k, etc. And this process is what we call devoicing. Here is an example. The word dogs. This is a word in the plural. We have a plural s and that plural s in our word would usually be pronounced with a z, a voiced sound, because g is also voiced. But what happens in this sentence? Listen carefully. He has four dogs. He has four dogs. The s is unvoiced. What happened here? Well, the former z is devoiced and changes to s because the word is at the end of the sentence and there's silence following. This is an example of devoicing of a final consonant. Here is another example. Let's listen. He has four dogs to guard the house. 
He has four dogs to guard the house. Again, here we have devoicing. The former z is also devoiced and changes to s because the next sound is unvoiced. It's an unvoiced t in the word to. But what about the word in this sentence? He has four dogs and a cat. He has four dogs and a cat. Here, dogs has a z sound. Why? Here, there's no devoicing and we say dogs with a voiced z because the next sound is a vowel sound. It's a schwa from the word end. Can this create problems? Yes, for the listener. Some minimal pairs only differ in that final sound. And the final difference is voicing or voicelessness of that sound. For example, bag and back. The only difference here really is the final sound, g and k. And remember, those were counterparts. That means they have the same place and manner of articulation, but the difference is voicing. So bag has g, which is voiced, and back k, which is unvoiced. Let's have a look at these two words in these sentences. The sentences are identical apart from the final words. Number one, I have a problem with my back. And number two, I have a problem with my back. The first sentence contains bag with g, a voiced sound. The second one contains back with the unvoiced k. They sound rather similar though when we say them naturally because the g in bag is often devoiced, making it sound like k instead. So how can we tell the difference if both words become back? Well, obviously from the context, usually you can tell which word is meant, but also because the preceding vowel sound, the A pronounced as E, differs in length in the two sentences and the two words. It's the same vowel sound, e, eh, but there is a difference in length. And this is how we know which word is said. And you might wonder, well, which one is long, which one is short? We'll have a look at this now. This, this vowel shortening happens because of a feature called pre-fortis clipping. When vowels become shorter, if they're followed by voiceless consonants. For example, in the word back, k, our unvoiced consonant, follows on from the vowel and that makes this vowel even shorter because of prefortis clipping. Vowels retain their length if they're followed by a voiced consonant, even if this voiced consonant is devoiced. So back. Even if we have devoicing here and the g changes to k, it does not affect the vowel. So here we have the vowel in its original length. Don't mix this up with long vowel sounds. E is not a long vowel. It is a short vowel and it just has its normal length and additionally an even shorter length. So to recap. I have a problem with my back. I have a problem with my back. In back, in the first sentence, we have devoicing, but it's the normal length of the vowel a. And in the second sentence, we have an even shorter a because of prefortis clipping. So if the g in bag is devoiced and the word becomes back, the vowel retains its original length. And so we tell the difference of this minimal pair by the vowel length, not by the consonant sound.
because the consonant is not really different anymore. What is different though is the vowel length. Let's look at one more example. Here we have three sentences. The lab, the lab kitchen and the lab opens. Now, what happens in each one? In the first sentence, the lab, the final B would probably be devoiced because it's at the end of the sentence here. And so B would change to P. Sometimes when we use IPA to show the transcription, instead of an unvoiced P, you might still see the B with a little circle underneath. And this means that this sound has now been devoiced and becomes essentially p. In the second sentence, the lab kitchen, again, we would have devoicing in the word lab because the following word is kitchen and kitchen starts with k and that's an unvoiced consonant. However, in our last sentence, the lab opens the lab opens, the lab opens. You could actually do a little test. The lab kitchen, mm, the vibration stops here at the end of lab and at the start of kitchen, the lab kitchen, but the lab opens, the lab opens, we have continuous voicing. And if you can't hear it, you'll certainly feel it. So read the sentences out yourself and see if you can hear and feel a difference. If you have any more questions about devoicing or about phonology and pronunciation, leave me a comment below.